Good people, welcome to the easiest ITX system assembly ever. First, we gotta open the case, insert the motherboard, secure the motherboard, insert the riser cable, connect the pre-routed cables, lower in the water block, and close this chamber. Install a GPU if you're lucky to have one, and bam! That's my review of the H1V2, thank you for watching. Oh, what's that? This isn't for stories, so we have to prolong it to 10 minutes plus to satisfy the algorithm? All right, so what are the differences between the original? The V2 is a slightly larger case at 15.5 liters versus 13.6, AKA with a larger GPU chamber to support the chunky beef, if you can afford one, the exterior holes are slightly bigger too. The 140 mm all-in-one cooler is still here, but now with an additional 92 mm fan for the GPU area, that's supposed to drastically improve temperatures, and they do. They finally updated the case IO to give us two USB-A ports instead of the one. It's pretty cool how they are purple and the USB-C port is full Gen 2 speed. We now have a larger power supply, so 750 watts at gold rated versus 650 watts on the OG. There's now a fan controller for all that cam love. And to everyone's fiery excitement, a brand sparkling new NZXT design PCIe Gen 4 riser cable. And so the main two questions I want to answer in today's video is the V2, a proper clean state after the dangerous disaster that was the V1, and how could you not see this is just a smooth transition to today's video sponsor? Bring in the butter. Uh-huh. I am so jealous of all who have access to Micro Center. Are you kidding me? They have everything to get you in the mood. Laptops for days for Eber, in stock hardware components. I mean, wow. And all types of gaming goodies for you know who. People call it tech heaven, but you don't gotta die to visit one. Go on a Thursday, for example. Prices are always competitive, and I'm told they have over 30,000 items in stock, and I call that confidence. New customers get a free SSD. Growing some market share, I see. Check out Micro Center down below. Okay, so I really want to appreciate the design of the H1. It's like a miniature architecture piece, but with totally simplified assembly procedure. For example, there are numbered stickers to let you know how to access the interior, if this is your first time working with the case, all of which requires no tools whatsoever. They've invested in proper non-paper caution triangles, Yes. They've listened to my advice from the previous video. Come on. Although the tempered glass here does nothing for me since you can't really see much on the inside anyway. But the rest of the case basics remain the same, which is how this is one of the easiest ITX experiences you can enjoy. The cooler is pre-installed with clear instructions on how to fold the tubes away, plus captive screws on that bracket that holds the radiator, which is so smart. The SFXL power supply is pre-installed with cleverly routed 24 pin and eight pin CPU cables. So you need to basically do zero cable management. Aside from plugging in the three pin pump tack connector that reads the pump RPM and the USB 2 plug for the fan controller so you can get access to cam later. Otherwise, the 140 millimeter fan is ready to go and the 92 millimeter fan is already plugged in as well into this easily accessible fan controller that is also pre-routed and is all ready to go. But of course, the power supply is fully modular so you can remove cables if needed. For example, we get three eight pin PCIe cables and I'm sure many of you are going challenge accepted. And then there are two SATA cables for the two SSD slots beside the power supply. The water block already has thermal paste pre-installed. So you just gotta select your motherboard mount of choice. And if you've ever installed an Asetek or Asetek AIO cooler, it's exactly the same. I do want to praise them for properly expanding that GPU chamber uh, because I mounted the largest graphics card I have on hand without a single hiccup. <laughs> oh no. No, I've jinxed it. I have jinxed it, oh no. All this thanks to the proper frame cutout near the thumb screws so the graphics card can slide in from the top and it basically filled out the entire space with less than one centimeter left from the top of the case but with still lots of room behind the back plate where the PCIe cables are just chilling with lots of room to spare. And so with all the convenience of the H1 and the larger frame for better cooling, 
how does the V2 perform? As usual, I do my testing with panels on and off, with dust filters on and off as well, for reference, just to see how much the pretty exterior shell blocks the airflow, and it's pretty good for a 140 miller cooler. And to my surprise, the V2 is just a degree warmer than my original on the CPU side, but the GPU temperature is significantly better thanks to the added fan and better ventilation on the side. This is with the performance mode enabled on cam, so the CPU fan and the rear fan were all all blasted to 100%. But one annoying thing, and perhaps this is because I'm using the cam in beta form, is that I have no control over the pump speed and it's constantly going at 4,000 RPM. And that is an issue because it is audible. Now you probably noticed something that had me curious. The radiator fan is mounted to exhaust air out of the case, which for ITX systems usually performs worse for the CPU, but better for the GPU. So I rotated the fan to intake air and to no one's surprise, this is how you should run your V2 if you need to squeeze a little extra cooling for the CPU. But there is a substantial hit on GPU temperatures, so you can either run this at stock for best cooling on the graphics side or with a fan as intake for better CPU temps. And so given all these updates, I love the V2. The price is higher due to tariffs at $399, which is steep, but definitely not much more expensive than equivalent standalone parts with the Gen 4 riser cable case especially. But aside from the fantastic GPU chamber and temperatures, this is probably the easiest ITX experience you can get and it deserves the Harbor Canucks damn good award. NZXT, well done my friend. Check out the V2 in the description below plus other competing tower ITX cases that are also worth considering like the Submeshalicious, fantastic case, especially with the Gen 4 riser cable that is going to be a really good competition versus this. And until next time, NZXT cam responsibly, my friends.